Hi everyone, so I'm going to continue my description on the black body radiation plot. Now remember that in the previous video I talked, uh, uh, I ended with this idea that the black body radiation uh, plot itself, the experimental observation shows plots that look like this, which is again, uh, is a plot of radiation intensity, which is again, remember that that just means how bright the light is that's being emitted by the black body versus the wavelength that's being emitted. Um, and the wavelength here, there's a different, you know, uh, it, it, it encompasses a huge range, but usually there's a maximum wavelength, which is the peak of this plot right here. And those peaks um, have a certain color because wavelength corresponds to color of the light. And as you can see here, the hotter the object, like the 6000 Kelvin uh, object right here is emitting light in the range of, you know, about 500 nanometers, whereas um, the object that's uh, cooler at about 3,000 Kelvin is emitting light in the at the maximum of about a you know a thousand or 900 um, nanometers. Okay, and what I ended with uh, the previous video with was the idea that the people who were you know again um, the 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 people who are at the front of physics at the time, people who were very well respected physicists at the time in the 1900, weren't were not able to predict the shape of this plot. In other words, they were predicting something that looks like this where the, um, the, the, the long wavelength part of the black body radiation was predicted correctly. In other words, they had a same shape like the experimental shape, but as they go to shorter and shorter wavelength, the intensity is predicted to go higher and higher and higher when in the uh, actuality, what happens is the intensity comes down uh, very quickly at the higher uh, frequency or lower wavelength region. Okay, so the question is, uh, you know, obviously this is a failure, right? They 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 weren't able to uh, match theory to uh, experimental observation, and so we needed something new to, you know, some new approach to this to be able to match again, like I said, theory to experiment. And so the person who was able to do that was somebody called Max Planck. Um, and this is uh, this this was him, and I want to just point out that this is such a um, you know all of and in our discussion of quantum mechanics, and the development of quantum mechanics, there's so many people involved in the development of this new theory, and most of these guys got the Nobel Prize in either chemistry or physics, um, because of their involvement with this, because it's such a important advance in our understanding of matter and matter-light interaction. And so uh, Planck himself got the Nobel Prize in 1918. Uh, his proposal of the uh, explanation for the black body radiation uh, occurred much early on, maybe around the early 1900s, maybe around 1901 or so. Uh, and basically this was the difference. The difference was that in the classical explanation, okay, classical again here being physics up to 1900, the explanation was that, you know, when you heat this object up, right, um, the atoms get heated up and the electrons in the atoms start to vibrate or oscillate. Again, I have been using this term a couple of times in two different videos. They start to oscillate and they start to oscillate at higher and higher and higher frequency, okay. Now, with the classical explanation, there's no limit to the frequency that the uh, electrons can oscillate in. So they can oscillate up to infinity, okay? They can keep oscillating. As long as you keep pumping in energy, they can keep oscillating. So as a result, if they can keep oscillating, that means that the amount of energy emitted in the form of light is also infinite. So then that's why the prediction, if you remember, will go just all the way to infinity, all the way up here, because uh, there's no limit to the amount of frequency that the electrons can oscillate in. As long as you keep pumping in energy, they should, uh, each electron, you know, can oscillate to very, very high uh, frequency. Planck's explanation is the following. Basically, what he's saying is that in order for you to be able to match this experimental curve, you have to have a limit of the oscillate, uh, oscillating frequency, okay? In other words, the, uh, the, the electrons, they, they can't just oscillate at any frequency they want. They have to oscillate only at specific frequencies, okay? And as a result of that, uh, the energy of, the, uh, the, energy of the uh, light that's being emitted 
is restricted to certain values. The values of the energy that's being emitted by the light is given by this um, equation which is n times h times nu. Nu is frequency as you remember from uh, our discussion in the previous topic. Nu is frequency of light. H is actually an experimentally determined uh, constant uh, and it's called the Planck's constant because he was the one who measured it uh, first and calculated it. Uh, we will give you know give the value of the Planck's constant later on uh, in, in later videos, but it's important to know that it's just a constant. N is a an integer, so it's, it's one, two, three, four, and so on. And what he's saying is basically that the energy of light can, the energy that the electrons is transferring to the light can only be uh, occur in these packets, the values of these packets. So it could be 1 h nu, 2 h nu, 10 h nu, a million h nu, but it can be 1.5 h nu, for example, or 1.9 h nu, or 2.1 h nu. That's important because what that's saying is that energy is, uh, is, is restricted to having certain fixed values, okay? Uh, and we'll talk about the difference between this this point of view versus the classical point of view in the next slide. But the idea is then you can only deliver certain packets of energy, certain quantity of energy. And that energy quantity is given by this equation, which is n times h nu. So some multiple, integer multiple of, of h nu. Okay, now let's talk about what exactly is the difference between those two uh, ways of looking at energy. Okay, one is the classical uh, classical way of looking at energy, which is of course a lot of times also referred to as the continuous energy um, uh, view. Okay, and then the other one is the quantized energy. Okay, so Planck developed this idea of a quantized energy. Quantized just means that it, the energy comes in certain quanta, and quanta is this Latin word for packets. So so energy can only be delivered or be absorbed in certain packets, certain values. So let's look at this picture again in terms of the actual difference. This is an analogy of a continuous versus kind of a, a quantized landscape, okay? If, if you have a, a, a turtle going from this top level to the bottom level, in a classical landscape, the, the, um, the, this, this path that the turtle takes basically just looks like an incline that uh, looks like this. So the turtle can take any position at once. It could be here, it could be here, it could be anywhere along this incline, right? And uh, there is nothing that restricts the position of the turtle. The turtle can be anywhere at once all along the uh, direction from the starting point to the end point. What Plang was saying is that for us to be able to match the theory to the data in black body radiation, we can't view the landscape of the energy like this, but we have to look at it like this, which is, you see the main difference here is that the turtle can only occupy certain energies. It's either this, or the middle one, or the bottom one, okay? But it can't have energy in between the top and the middle. That's not allowed. It can't have energy between the bottom and the middle. That's also not allowed. And that's completely different than the classical, because in the classical, you can have any energy you want, okay? That's why it's called continuous, because there's no restriction. This one is called discrete or quantized, because you can only have this or that or that, but not things that are in between these two, okay? So that's the main difference between uh, the, uh, the two approaches. Now, Planck himself actually didn't quite understand why uh, this had to be the case. In fact, the person who explained it later was Einstein, but he was just saying that, you know, that's the only way I can make this equation match the experimental observation. Now, we're not actually talking about showing, you know, the complicated equations that he was working with, but really what we're saying in the end is that this is the part you have to know, which is that the energy can only be transferred in these packets. That's the only way you can explain why the black body radiation plots look like this instead of the one that's predicted by classical mechanics.